What up, y'all? This is Corp File Notice Media. Welcome to another episode of Stream It Just. Roll that intro. Stream it, stream it, stream it just. Uh -huh, just stream it. And it's been a little while, but that's not my fault. That's Netflix's fault. They really haven't been releasing um, very many like noteworthy things I can pitch at you to have it, you know, mess up the algorithms, kind of bring up different things for you to watch. Um, but luckily, finally, they have, and I've actually got a chance to watch a few of the things that they have released. Uh, most notably. A Netflix special movie that was actually pretty darn good so I'm excited to come over here and show you some of my list and show you some of the things that I appreciated watching and I'll give you a couple reviews out of my list and then a couple things I haven't seen yet that I'm looking forward to as well as uh, little trailers here and there I haven't done a trailer on this channel yet with uh, this playlist but w why not we'll give it a shot right so uh, first thing that pops up that got um, really good critic reviews but is not looking too well for audience views is The Lobster. And The Lobster was released in 2015. Um, it's like in a kind of uh, dystopian-ish type future where if you can't find love and procreate, you become an animal of your choice. So it's it seems very interesting to me. I, I, I unfortunately, I missed it in theaters. I wanted to see it and I completely forgot about it. And then it popped up here on Netflix. So, um, in the near future world, single people are hunted and enforced to find mates within 45 days or be turned into animals and banished into the wilderness. So, um, it sounds, it sounds fun. Um, it's, it looks like some very dark humor. I'm not going to run through the trailer for you on this one, but it's something that, um, you might like if you like things that are a little different. Um, with that said, since that's a different one, Triple X, Triple X, the original is now on Netflix. And so this was a 2002 movie release from back in the day. We'll put on, we'll put on the music in the trailer because it's so awesome. But this is just a really good, um, kind of like a nineties type feel popcorn action movie. So if you want to just chill out when you get home from work and, and watch a pretty darn good action movie, um, keep in mind it's like a 90s style action movie and it's pretty over the top, but it, it, it's good. I, I, I enjoyed it. Unfortunately, the, the sequels weren't as good as this, but hey, the originals are almost always the best. So if you haven't seen Triple X, I would definitely suggest um, checking it out. It's, it's worth the two hours um, to go through and see it. But, and if you like it a lot, then maybe check out the sequels. The sequels are on Netflix too. But um, be prepared for a, a, little, a little bit of a, a worser movie when it comes to the sequels. So let's go ahead and get that one out of here. And then, you know, I was, was talking about this yesterday with one of my friends and uh, the new Godzilla anime movies, um, they're, they're good if you like anime and like the Godzilla is huge in this one and I'll put the music on too for this actually no they're talking so they're huge they're super super or Godzilla is super super big and it's like more of like a force of nature like there's really not much that people can do to fend off Godzilla like when it happens it just happens and so there's like they live in space it's super far in the future um one through three is out watch the first one if you like the first one continue watching it or if you know you put it on for like a half hour you're like this isn't my shindig and it's not your shindig it's no big deal but um i i enjoyed watching it just because i have kind of a, a a thing for anime that just because of the artwork as you can see is, is very very cool in this one so i i recommend this jaws is back um, I think I had this on a previous episode of Stream It Just, but like right after I talked about it, they took it down. And then about three or four weeks ago, they put it back up now. So there you go. So if you watched one of my videos and you said, oh, Jaws, and you went and looked for it, and it wasn't there, I apologize, but it's back for some odd reason. But there we go, that's that. And after Jaws, we have a Netflix original called Velvet Buzzsaw. Um, I enjoyed velvet velvet buzzsaw quite a bit i really did um i had some issues with it when it all wrapped up but they meant for you to have issues when with it like um it's one of those movies where you, you're gonna be like wait what what's happening how did that work why 
why did this happen and this not happen? Like after I watched it, like we like talked about it for probably like a half hour, 45 minutes and like said, oh, I like these things. But then like these were things I would have done differently. But it's a it's a very, very good movie. Um, I would I would definitely um, say I recommend it. Um, as far as a score goes, I, I'm really kind of hesitant to give movies like this scores because I really liked it, but I some people might not like it. I have a really odd taste with movies, but just came out 2019. Yeah, user reviews is a 69%, which I'm not surprised of at all, but a feared critic and an icy gallery owner and an ambition, ambitious assistant step up in a recently deceased artist's stash of paintings with dire consequences. So um, the main character, um, one of the tenants in her apartment building dies and she goes and it's just full of art and she happens to be an assistant at an art gallery and these paintings are like beautiful and sad and like they're, they're good. Like just looking at the paintings, the paintings are pretty cool. But then there's like a supernatural element to it and it gets in to kind of like a thriller type aspect with a couple of a couple of scary moments in it here and there. Um, not too many, but it's it's really good. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal's in it. Jake Gyllenhaal is just an amazing actor and everything he he's in, especially like the odd kind of creepier roles that he plays are very, very good. John Malkovich is in it, Rene Russo's in it. Like, like it's an all-star cast to be honest with you. And the acting is very, very well, even in some of these kind of like unbelievable kind of like, I don't want to say cheesy cause it's not cheesy, but it's like scary, but like, oh, like they play it and they play it very, very well. Um, definitely check it out and let me know what you think about it. And that reminds me, if you appreciate my videos and you like what I do, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, share on social media, that super helps. Sharing it on social media helps more than anything else. Um, even if you like it and you can hit the like button if you share it, oh, it's so much help. That's Velvet Buzzsaw, for sure see it. Um, Black Mirror Bandersnatch, it's been out for a while. I really, really like Black Mirror. Um, out of all the Black Mirror episodes, there's probably only about three that I didn't care for, which says a lot. I wanna say there's probably like 18 to 20 episodes of Black Mirrors throughout like three or four seasons at this point. But Bandersnatch is, um, it's based in 1984. Um, a young programmer begins to question reality as he adapts a dark fantasy novel into a video game and a mind-bending tale with, men, with multiple endings. So this is like an interactive where you choose what you're doing. Um, and I'm not going to give too much away because it, like, it, it, it was fun, but when it was all over, I was like, ah, oh, but it kind of followed the theme of what they were doing. And that's a lot of <laughs> Black Mirror. Like when you finish watching an episode of Black Mirror, most of the time you're like, Oh, damn, that sucks. <laughs> so they like playing with the emotions and I get what they were trying to do here. I just, I just didn't like it. I was expecting more from Black Mirror. So it's probably my fault, but that has a 72% for uh, Netflix anyway. So if you like Black Mirror, give it a chance. I know a couple of people that watch it that like kind of felt the same way I did, but it was still like an enjoyable one-time thing. But you have to interact with it. You have to use your remote and pick what you want to do and like choose your path. So it's not like you can't just kick back and relax. You gotta like, oh shit, where's the remote? And look for it. So you have to keep it handy and kind of pay attention throughout the movie, like more so than what you would normally be used to. So I recommend it, why not? Um, Pulp Fiction is on Netflix. If you haven't seen Pulp Fiction, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Watch Pulp Fiction. It's very, very good. Um, Dog Eat Dog is, was released on Netflix. It does not have good ratings, but I like William Dafoe and, uh, I am a sucker for Nicolas Cage and I'm really curious to see how this movie is going to be. It came out in 2016. Never heard of it until just now. So. A delusional ex-con rejoins the unhinged former partners of his last job. Kidnap the baby of a mobster's enemy for ransom. So there's like a little monster, a mobster movie. So hey, why not, right? I, I'll, I'll, I'll watch this. I would say, why don't you wait and I'll watch this and I'll make a video in two days and do a good review of Dog Eat Dog. Because that, that review score kind of worries me, but hey, why not? 
um, Lock, Stock, and Two Barrels is also on Netflix. So um, if you like like the um, uh, kind of like English dark humor, then watch this movie. It is older, um, so it's like it, it, the way it's shot. It looks really really low budget even for like 1998, but it is completely worth it. Think of it like like uh, kind of like Clerks. I was filmed in black and white on purpose. Um, this. I believe was kind of filmed crappy on purpose to be gritty, but you have to get past that part. If you can't get past it, you probably won't enjoy it, but it has tons and tons of like the staples, like uh, like Snatch, uh, Rock and Roller, a lot of the same actors from those movies are, are in this one. Um, as you can see, you'll probably like Bullet Tooth Tony's in this movie, but it's a different name from Snatch. Um, uh, Nick Morgan is in this movie. He was also in Snatch and Lock, Stock and Two Barrels. So they use a lot of the same people. I like to think it's all in the same universe. Um, I'm pretty sure the director might have actually even stated that all these have all these movies happen within the same universe. So it's they're good, man. Like check this out. But only if you like those kind of movies. And if you've never seen those types of movies, watch Snatch first, and then this, and then Rock and Roll. I think that's like the appropriate way to watch it. Not necessarily the sequence or anything like that. Just from my viewing experience, that would probably a good, be a good way to go because Snatch is very, very good. Kung Fu Hustle, baby. Um, Kung Fu Hustle is uh, great. It's probably one of my favorite movies. It came out in 2004. And it's like a parody. It's a parody kung fu movie, and it's very, it's done very, very well. It's super over the top, just like how kung fu should be, and like people have these crazy powers, and it, it gets super out of control. But uh, seeing a mob, a mobster in 1940s China, um, longs to be as cool as his formerly clad axe gang, a band of killers who rule Hong Kong, but can only pretend. So they're like pretend gangsters and they run into this like all this whole crazy shenanigans happen and everything and it's really really good and the movie's only like an hour and a half long um if you like over the top violence very silliness uh, a lot of like outlandish things happening um give this a shot i guarantee you you won't be disappointed with it um out for something that i have not seen yet and i actually we're gonna we're gonna watch this trailer So that's the trailer, and um, you know it, it looks it looks appealing to me. I'm not gonna lie, I like it, but I like the anime type stuff and everything like that. But these uh, these episodes are all between like 20 and 10 minutes long. So this looks like it's gonna be a really quick one run through. I think I don't know if they're gonna be related. Like I said, I haven't watched any of it, but it looks it looks appealing to me. And if I figure, hey, I might like it, share it with you, maybe you'll like it, and we can have, and we can talk about it. Um, I'm still trying to finish Gotham. I like Gotham, but it's just hard. Uh, it's so long, Gotham hour-long episodes, and there's like 30 episodes in a season, it's, it's kind of hard for me to keep up with. Um, Exposed is also a, a movie that came out on Netflix recently, and it has one of my favorite actors on it, and I want to watch this one as well. Keanu Reeves. tricked me it looped i didn't realize it looped until that scene but um so not much given away in the trailer which i i kind of 
I like that kind of a thing where you don't really know everything, but let's see. A young teacher has a brush with a, the supernatural at a train station where a police officer is found murdered the following day. So it sounds like a little type of mystery, crime drama a little bit. Um, Keanu Reeves is in it. He actually has a very, um, he's a very well-ranged actor. Um, I, I love giving him heat along with everybody else from like, the FBI is gonna pay me to surf from his younger days and uh, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures and then like Point Break. Um, I am an FBI agent. Like, I love his old stuff because it's so silly. But um, Point Break is also an awesome movie. It's not on Netflix, but if you haven't seen the original Point Break, check that out. Just be prepared for some like <laughs> really hot acting from Keanu Reeves. But he's really found his niche. So the older he got, the he's gotten so so good at acting. But that's that. Um, Christopher McDonald's also in it, so um, it has a 95% for the reviews or like thumbs up, thumbs down option. I think is the only thing you have now on Netflix. So it looks like a lot of people are really enjoying this. I'll, I'll watch this and maybe kick it out on a review next time I do weekly trending as well. Death Race is on Netflix. I watched it again. Um, Death Race is also one of those movies that's kind of like Triple X. It's just a it's just a fun action movie. Um, tons of gore and I mean they're vehicular combat. I've been playing Cross Out on Xbox One lately, so maybe that's why I saw Death Race and was like, I want really want to watch Death Race. Um, if you're a gamer and you haven't heard of Cross Out, it's a it's a free to play game and it's quite fun for being free. Um, it's uh, kind of just chill and you shoot other people in your vehicles and you can create your own cars and make them all crazy and like you can submit blueprints to the community and like people build like these like a car that looks like a TIE fighter or like the spider looking car. It's uh, it's cool if you're a gamer and you look like looking for something a little different then uh, check that one out, it's super fun. But anyway, now that I've rambled on and started talking about video games, we're supposed to be talking about Netflix. Um, let's finish off with uh, Turn Up Charlie. Turn Up Charlie just came out, Netflix original. Um, no reviews out on it yet. I'm pretty sure this just dropped in the last couple of days, maybe within the last week. So um, I already watched the trailer for it. It looks very interesting. It looks like it's about kind of like a like a washed up DJ, he was super popular at one point, now he's not, and uh, he gets offered a job and he thinks it's gonna be like this groundbreaking job with this new guy who's like the new hit DJ. Turns out they want him to like nanny and watch their kid and they want someone that they know to watch the kid so he takes the job. So it's um, it's gonna be a like, a like a family friendly, heartfelt show, I believe. Um, but it looks very, very funny, and I'm going to check it out. And I think you should probably check it out, too. It looks pretty good. Um, let's see. Uh, the main actor in it, he's also very good, too. And uh, he's been in a couple of uh, the uh, movies that I've recommended in the past. So he's fun, and I'm really kind of looking forward to see him in more of um, like a comedy-based uh, TV series because he was in The Office. He took over as assistant, um, I think assistant VIP for Dunder Mifflin uh, towards like season five or six. And I, I liked his character a lot. He was like a real dry. And this looks like he really gets down and gets to do um, like laugh out loud uh, comedy instead of just like in The Office when he'd say stuff, he'd be like, hmm, that's silly. But this looks like it's gonna be pretty good. So, um, that's all I got for you. I, uh, I, blew, I blew my load and now I'm tired and I want to have a sandwich. So thank you very much for watching me if you made it to the end. I appreciate you. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time.